I'm with Brenda this morning from the Clark County Beekeepers Association. Good morning. Good morning. You know, not only do you have honeybees, but you also have mason bees, and that's what we're here to talk about today. Mason bees are great. They're pretty easy, aren't they? You know, they're so easy to keep because they you don't have to have the hive furniture like you do with a oh, honeybee. Mm -hmm. um, basically, it's a block of wood for the mason bees. And, um, you know, you just want to make sure you have a southern or an eastern exposure. Okay. And they're one of the best pollinators out there, and they're native here to the northwest. So what's so special about these holes, though? Are they have to be precise? Yeah, they have to be. Well, they can be on a random order, but you want them to be 5 16 Okay. And then what kind of wood should it be? It should be a non-treated wood. And I've noticed sometimes at um, garden centers they have these tubes, these paper tubes. Yes, the paper tubes are great. Um, you can either put, purchase the paper tubes full of bees so mm -hmm. they can hatch out in the spring or you can get the um, one-time use to um, gather up and put in a PVC pipe or you know in a along with your block of wood. So they know what to do. You just kind of put them out there and they're ready to go and pollinate your flowers or your fruit trees. Right. They come out about the time of the cherry blossom. So they're just, you know, so active and they're just great to have around. They're a little um, uh, black, blue-black bee, mm -hmm. a little bit bigger than a housefly. They're real docile. They don't sting or anything. So we've probably seen them flying around our gardens and just didn't even know what they were. Right. You probably thought they were a, a fly. Right. And these are their little capsules, aren't they? Yes. Now, they house themselves with pollen and mud, and but they build these little capsules. And then in the springtime, they emerge. Mm -hmm. And so after they're finishing emerging, they kind of lay eggs right away for the next generation before they yes. go do their work? Right. The males um, are pretty expendable, oh. so they are actually <laughs> towards the uh, front of the uh, mud hole. Well, just in case a bird, they want to save the females. Just, yeah, <laughs> the females are always towards the back of the nest box. Males emerge first, you know, bad weather, whatever. Oh. <laughs> so, um, and then the females are toward the back, and um, then they just get to work right away pollinating um, a you know, mason bee, um, about 250 of them can pollinize the same as 20,000 honeybees. And honeybees are a little lazier, so these guys are really the workhorses of the garden. Yes, honeybees are lazy. <laughs> they are a European import, I'm sorry to say, and um, they are fair-weathered bees. Ah. The orchard mason bee is a native here to the northwest. They're used to our rainy weather, so yeah. <laughs> So they have little boots on with their little umbrellas when they go out. So that's good to know because we do have rainy springs and we want those things pollinated. We want fruit during the summer. So it's nice oh, that they're yeah, out there. Oh, yeah, especially our fruit trees and stuff. I mean, you know, they, it comes on so early and the mason bee is just the pollinator to have. So it's pretty easy to do. I know there's lots of information and there's going to be website information on gardentime.tv. And I know that you go around to different events with your beautiful houses. They're so cute and colorful. And it just kind of helps the population increase in your neighborhood or in your house, in your area. So it's really good to go find one and put one up. Thank you so much and keep on being. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.